still doesn't read quite right. I think what we should say is to confer the title of honorary alderman or to admit a person to be an honorary freeman of the district. That, that sort of makes a bit more sense because we had a big discussion about whether they would or wouldn't admit to be an honorary freeman. Not an honorary freeman. <laughs> so it says to admit a person to be an honorary freeman of the district. Yeah. Um, we've always felt that that was something in Margate that the Charter Trustees agreed. Are you telling me now, after all these years, that the council can declare someone an alderman and never knew that before? Thank you. You're not alone in raising that, actually. We had a little discussion about that ourselves in the CRC. Councillor yeah. Tomlinson. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, it is an interesting point. Um, both Horace and myself are been granted an honorary Burgess of Margate. Um, my name is a while back and there are other people who are still alive. It's what you've done in the town and so on, which um, is a wonderful honour. Obviously you have a robe and a hat. This was looked into regarding, and I'm, I'm sure I'm not fully Tim, I'm not saying you're wrong Tim, I wouldn't do that, but it was looked into by the Margate Charter Trustees very deeply a number of years back about Henri Freeman. And the answer to that, not the Sarah Shakir Freeman, so I get the wrong Aspiring idea. To it, we are. Yes, I know we are. Um, <laughs> but it was stated from government that any sitting councillor cannot be made an honorary Freeman. That's correct. Uh, a person in Joe Public yeah. take my chair. Yes, thank you. No, I think the only freedom is meant to be a person who's, who's for their good deeds in the district generally. So it's, it's generally not conferred on councillor. That's one of the alderman roles conferred on. Okay. Um. I'm in your hands, there are a lot of changes here, so... Um, Blue, then on page 29, um, membership the cabinet, up to 10 members of the authority is in blue and it's crossed out, is that in or out? Is it up to 10 or...? Yeah, the, 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 the law says up to 10, and um, given that the um, membership cabinet can change at the whim of the leader, it felt better for the cabinet, indeed for all the committees, not to have the numbers, because the numbers can change over time. So whilst legally the cabinet is up to 10, that's that's the law anyway. So no, and we thought, since we're taking out numbers for every other committee as well, because they also change, and political policy changes. Yeah, so, so it's gone now. Yeah, yeah. Page 32, um, Section 1, Section 2, and it says, deal with any matter that is referred to it by an officer. I presume elected members can refer things to the licensing board. Or am I missing something? Um, I will check that separately, but licensing boards are, are a peculiar animal because they are designed outside the local framework, so there are more administrative committee. So we'll, we can check that for sure. But I have an idea not, because they, they have a specific statutory role into the determining application. So. And an extra point, Mr. Hughes would me. The reason uh, 2.111 is in there is that uh, at the moment lots of functions are transferred to officers, but he then, uh, the officer then has an authority to transfer it back to say, actually, you know what, I think this might be better dealt with by committee. So it, it's like a reverse delegation option for the officer as well. So, but we'll look into about references by, by members. I think what would happen is you would talk to the officer and then the officer would refer it to the board. So we would do it that way rather than us directly referring to the board ourselves, but I think we need to know if we're allowed to do that. Yeah. But um, on the Governance Audit Committee, uh, we hadn't included risk management as a function as a Governance Audit Committee, so it's, it's not in the list. So can I ask Commissioner Dillard to include list, uh, risk management as well? It's, one of, it's a function it carries out, it's just not on the list. We had a big discussion, I think, and it seems so long ago now, and we thought that the monitoring officer couldn't be the diversity champion. Was that it at the time? When, when um, Councillor Connor of Collins wanted to know who was the diversity champion, and we felt it was an elected member, 
and the cabinet member would choose somebody or else be the person themselves. But there was some discussion that actually you were. Just to clarify, um, there was an audit report which suggested that the management team should, should appoint a diversity champion on management team. So I am therefore the authority's officer diversity champion. Uh, the leader has chosen not to appoint a member diversity champion. Page 44, um, it's 10 that's crossed out the media centre. The media centre belongs to that district council. It is sublet on the ground floor to an independent person who now seems to take it over the whole building and is looking for rent for the whole building. Why is it crossed out here? Because it's a very important um, asset of the council. Yes, yeah, sorry, it's crossed out there because it appeared twice in the delegation. So it appeared there and it appeared in the finance and estates. So now, it, so, so on page 20, top of the page, item 13, so it appears there. So, so it appeared oh, on the right, yeah, two portfolio yeah, holes. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Yes, again, this is the, um, this, this explains the way the um, officers will carry out their um, functions, which wasn't necessarily in the earliest previous delegation. And again, it, it tries to mop up issues about um, where legislation changes or is amended or is repealed and subsequently reenacted. It still covers the same issues. So again, it, 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 sort of, it fixes delegation by function rather than by, necessarily by legislation, which, which given that we operate by function rather than legislation, it's, it's, it's more practical thing to do. Um, um, paragraph 2 on page 50, um, 50 says you know, the limitations on exercise of that function I, it must be in accordance with any relevant policy and it complies with financial procedures and contract any orders. And yes, and that 4 is quite a key one and, and, and an exercise that the, the chairman to some extent is that legislation keeps making reference to proper officers without saying who those proper officers might be in terms of our structure. So what we're saying here is that if your proper officer, so if the legislation is um, within your purview as a, as a member of the corporate management team or the staff, or you have budget responsibility for it, and the person is, carried, is qualified to be a proper officer, and the constitution doesn't require that role to be carried out by anybody else, then um, members of the CM, senior management team may act as or appoint uh, their own officers to act as proper officers. So that's otherwise, as it's a chairman note, you get coming across the phrase proper officer without any definition of who it should be. So this then ties it down to either it's a functional responsibility or it's a budgetary responsibility, which is it goes to the director or one of their officers. Sorry. Um, just staying with page 50, can I suggest that you don't help and one one? That you don't have, you don't mention clinical director. You just say external officer appointed by Public Health England. Section F of this section concerns itself with the consortia arrangements, which are um, shared between ourselves and two other neighbouring authorities. It might nevertheless be helpful on pages. 54 to 55, you can briefly explain the crossings out of the E's and EC's and all that. Well, um, Mr. Hughes did, did, did explain the mystery to me. The term says uh, E is the executive function, C account avoidance, which is, I felt very embarrassed. I didn't know that at the time. But, but that's, 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 that's what they are. But they still don't necessarily add anything to the clarity of this document by being included in it. I think they make reference for those carry out the services, but not for this authority. That's the Johnson. Yeah, this is, there's a wide range of things that we do jointly in our East Kent Services Committee. Um, but there's also um, our East Kent Housing, where decisions can be made on council housing um, in the name of. Um, East Kent housing, but actually you can see it as Thanet District Council. Where's the accountability now and the reports that would come perhaps from East Kent housing? Um, I know it's not something that's listed here as something that should happen, but it was one of the, their arm's length where they should be reporting back. I do have the occasional issue. Yes, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look 
The string beyond here into the realms of abstract legalities. Um, I'm sensing that we're probably coasting home to victory as regards Annex 3, unless anyone's got a sudden insight um, that they wish to share with us. Um, that section, therefore, has raised two specific issues which need further clarification and um, understand, or at least, an, and an amendment. So for the purposes of clarity, we have undertaken the side route typos and stuff on page 35 to add, not literally, because there may be finer phrasing, but a, 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 a penultimate, no, a final bullet point under the section page 55 that runs to the subheading accounts we will add to oversee risk management function of the authority or words to that effect. That's the first point. And, and then the final issue which um, we, or the officers will seek to advise is in relation to reporting on the East Kent Housing Consortium. Councillor Johnson. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's um, H on page 57, or 33, page 57, um, appointing bailiffs, debt collection agents, etc. These are very important people um, that the Council will appoint to do works or through East Kent services. And um, there have been times when those people have been to say the least, heavy-handed in dealing with our residents. And I just wonder, do we ever get a report, I've never seen one, of failures of bailiffs? I do know of some that have become bankrupt themselves, but I just wonder how diligent we are in the appointment of them and the monitoring of them and their behaviours once they're doing work on our behalf. Yeah, this, this would be a matter for the relevant portfolio holder, to be honest, so it's, a, it's part of the executive function, so it would have to be reported to the portfolio holder or to cabinet. But I, I can't tell any further than that, because I don't know what reports have been made on the appointment or use of bailiffs. Thank you, thank you. You don't always hear until you hear from the members of the public. No, thank you, Councillor Johnson. I do apologise for my, my speech this evening. Um, but yes, you're absolutely right. That's um, uh, that's the visible side. That's the the visible side of the council. This is the council's um, uh, council in action, if you like, um, following up um, uh, matters relating to individual tenants. Uh, and we want to ensure. We would wish to ensure that at all times that um, that they, our agents, are acting um, in accordance with very strict guidelines and and certainly standards. I feel. That um, it would be appropriate that, that we were aware that there was an overseeing procedure um, um, to ensure that uh, uh, we were satisfied that our tenants are fairly treated. Again, this is an executive function and we have no power to, to, to amend executive functions. So this is um, also part of the agreement between ourselves and the shared services anyway, so we have no power at this committee to actually amend this agreement, this merely repeats what the agreement says. No. Thank you. I've had a few executive functions in here in my time, and there have been times when I knew nothing about things till the families came to me because they were in court and they were evicted. And that is a worry for me, that the line of communication from, for example, East Kent Housing, to the cabinet member with responsibility for housing, or even the leader of that being, didn't know that these things happened until the families came to you looking for housing yet again. And that's a worry within any council, whoever runs it, to discover that I'd like to have known this. I understand the concern exactly, and just saying that's not a function of this committee no, 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 to, to, no, no. to manage that process. Yeah. 
Okay, um, so other than those clarifications and amendment, or addition rather than amendment, um, I'm taking it that there is agreement that the Annex 3 um, is acceptable to standards.